evening, friends. Uh, welcome to Samad's fourth lecture in our series commemorating the 150 years of uh, Gandhi. And I will begin by very mundane announcements, which are please do switch your mobiles to silent or switch them off. It's always very disturbing. <coughs> I'd also like to thank the India Habitat Center for collaborating in this series of lectures we've been doing. Today is the fourth, and it's Tridip uh, Surud who probably does not need an introduction. His talk is uh, titled The Story of Antaryami. And then I thought about a visit I had paid to the Sabarmati Ashram when Tridhi Bhai was um, heading it. Um, and before that, a visit to the Birla House, uh, which I had also uh, made in conversation with, uh, with Tridhi Bhai to look at the murals uh, which are in, in this kind of a building outside in the garden where he was assassinated. There's, there's a, uh, a narrative of his life in murals, uh, which, which actually, uh, this, this image is taken from, from that set of, of images. And I was curious about who had, who had painted that mural, under what conditions, at what time period, and so on. Um, and it struck me that, <coughs> You know, one always wants more perspectives on Gandhi. Uh, one, one always wants to see him in new ways. That no matter what you feel you know about him, and his life has exhaustively been studied and presented and known and researched and, and, and discussed, um, there's always more. And uh, one's curiosity is almost as endless as the... Uh, the, the interest and the complexity of, 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 of the subject of the life of Gandhi. Um, <clears throat> and while I was thinking why this is the case, um, um, it struck me uh, that perhaps this is what it means um, for Tulsi Das to have titled his work the Ram Charit Manas. Right? What is a Charit Manas? Uh, it's a lake. <coughs> Uh, metaphorically, of deeds and of the character of the protagonist. But when somebody invokes the small still voice and says that is the final measure of things, how do I and how do we engage with that voice? Um, and that was the, the question that um, has stayed with me for a very, very long time, uh, more so when reading the autobiography closely. And let me first construct the way the autobiography gets written and the role that this indweller plays. The modes by which Gandhi wants to dwell within himself, within spaces, within language, within institutional norms, within certain certain observances that he thinks are essential for him to, uh, to acquire the capacity to hear that voice, and then see what that voice actually does to our reading, to our engagement with Gandhi. Because if we are denied any opportunity to engage, because in the final instance, the voice comes and says, it is the voice, it is the measure of all truth, at least as far as Gandhi is concerned, how do we finally, in the ultimate analysis, engage with that? So that's really what I, I, I propose to do. Um, that had been um, a strange decade, um, partly spent in prison, um, partly uh, um, spent in Delhi, um, undergoing a, a long and probably not a very meaningful fast uh, for 24 days. 24 days. Yeah. Uh, uh, some, um, um, and, and, and then this act of writing the autobiography. The day before um, he began to write the autobiography, the day, almost the day before, or, or probably on the day that he wrote the first chapter, the introduction, which is 23rd uh, November 1925, 
Gandhi decided to go on a fast. 